Well, here we go again. Welcome to episode 3 of the SER Diagram 1328, I believe. 1328 coal wagon. So this is where we were up to last week. The plan for today is to finish off the CAD in Fusion 360. Then to move on to um, setting up the model for printing using a slice bit of slice of software. So we might as well get straight into it. First thing I've noticed is okay, actually I need to update. I'm trying to remember what I did from last week. So since last week I've added the side into the model there. And I've added a couple of springs. I've cheated slightly and reused a spring model from uh, the previous model adjust it slightly for the dimensions because this is quite a long spring um, but showing you all of that might have been a bit boring so I didn't bother um, and yes yeah, so the other thing we're looking at this week that's a little bit different is assemblies in Fusion 360 so I've dropped the side in I'll show you how I did that last week I think and I've added these springs in using another relationship so you can see this sort of brick here with the two blue bricks is the joint. So you can see I jointed this part onto this part. And then you can you might be able to see if the resolution is good enough in here. But this part here is a mirror. So what I've done is used the mirror tool as usual and mirrored a component in the assembly here. So Right. So yes, first thing to note, that I didn't pick up on last week, is these mounting points for the side stick down a little bit too far here. So I'm going to go back into the body. Another useful thing about assembly is here, so if I deselect everything, if you select a side or a surface or something, it gives you this little blue dashed line underneath the component that that is part of. So I'm just going to open this back up, give it a few seconds. I'm very wary now after last week's crash that um, of having too many windows open at the same time and things like that, so I've got everything else closed down. We're just running everything we need to today. So I can't remember I've used this tool before, but it's called a press pull. So if you have one surface, that you want to be slightly further in or slightly further out, it's a very useful tool to use. So I'm going to pick up on that surface there and that surface there, and I'm going to bring those up by 0.5 mm, so minus 0.5 because it's in the opposite direction that the arrow was originally pointing. And it just moves that surface up. So this is a nice quick fix if you have something to do, like, like say if it's part of an extrusion, that has multiple parts but you only want to make one bit a little bit shorter this is a useful thing to use so let's do that hit save come back into the master assembly and update everything and let's just tuck it up a little bit further realistically you're not going to be viewing the model at any kind of angle that's going to show up so that will do for now Let's continue. Uh, well, this side needs detailing first, but we also need to assemble the rest of this with some wheels in here and make sure we've got enough clearance everywhere. So I'm just wondering what we should go ahead and do first. Um, I think it makes sense to finish off all the detailing first, so let's go for that side there. Open that up, take a drink. Right, let's get the drawing back out. What we have here is essentially just a whole load of rivets. Not much else to put on here. 
say. Let's pick up on those central four first. Give me the diagram. Pick this face. Start drawing circles again. Again, this one's not going to be a pattern job. It's more straightforward just to draw four figures. If you have an option here for, say, drawing a dimension, I could dimension it from here and mirror it. But what I'm actually going to do is dimension between the furthest away points I can, because that gives me a little bit more, a little bit less inaccuracy in measurement. So I'm going to measure that as eight and a little bit near seven millimeters. Let's call that. Same thing here. That two and a half. That's already not point five, which is good. That should also be one point five. Which I already mentioned. Good. Done, extrude all of those. So, let's, where should we go next? There's a sort of thingy just underneath the hinge on the right, so I'm just trying to have a look at what that is in the um, on the flow series. Um, that's not very obvious either. Um, hmm. Well, I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to have to guess from the drawing. Just put a rectangle in to represent that. Again, this is a one of those times where being a double O model, I'm not really going to notice much of this, which is just as well because it's going to be a struggle for the 3D printer to replicate all of this. Back from the center, I think. Let's call that the seven millimeters. Let's do that five point two five for to be visible. Um, a little bit further on, we have what looks like a handle of some kind. Um, it does appear to be there on photos. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see that either on double O, so let's simplify it a little bit. Let's make that a little formal. That a little bit formal. We'll draw a couple of lines between the two. Tension take the thing up again. Let's call that three millimeters. Centre, 
because as we mentioned last week, the ends aren't necessarily accurate in this. Oh, I'm going to call that 15 more inches. Through again. One like that, 5.2. And around that whole edge by, let's say, point one this time. That's not really going to show up very much, but. Um, what am I doing? This is a handle or something. I want to extrude that a little bit further so it looks more like a thing. Give that a few more than two. There we go. I think that's as close as we're going to be able to get with double O. Not actually that much else going on there, really. A couple of bits at either end, so let's put those in. And then there's a sort of brace thing going on at the end as well. So we may as well have that. Uh, let's use our single data again. Is 21.5, the other one is 18.5. Uh, 0.75 is fine. Two rounds two and do the whole lot again. No pain there. Cover you. And the last couple of bits. Let's have a look at our assembly quickly. Put it on, yes. Yeah. So there are a couple of bits on the end, so there's a little raised section that will represent the rectangle. I mentioned that distance there, which is just over one mil, but I'm going to call that. One mil, because I think we're going to lose some material from the other side a little bit more. Twenty five. Extrude that to so more. Twenty five. Not sure that's meant that extrusion a little bit bigger. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with the photo and make that a little bit bigger. That do. This is one of the issues of working with side on drawings, you don't get a sense for how deep things are. So let's put a mill in here. That is 0 0.75 below. 3. 5 by 3. Top. And we want to stick a fillet, which is this two here. I'm not sure if I used that already. On that corner and that corner, I want to fillet it by half of that dimension, which is. Let's see if I can use this. No, I can't. Okay, so that's interesting. The clipping on a dimension to be able to use it doesn't seem to work in this instance. We know it's 0 0.75, so let's put 0.35 and that'll be close enough. Extrude that by 0.25. And there's a couple of little rivets on this strap as well. So let's put a couple of those in. Not in the centre of that, we want the centre of that there, the little triangle. So let's put that in. 0.4 and 
try and keep that one going. Another part. Got two millimeters. And it's going to come up with a There we go. There we go. And finally, let's stick another mirror on this. So I want that one, that one, that one, that one. In the mirror plane, which is over there somewhere. There we go, that's one side, possibly fully detailed, I think. I'm just checking the chat as well. So hello folks who've actually turned up. Good to see. I think the entertainment value of watching me do the same thing over and over again is worn off slightly. But that's alright, we're going to mix it up in a bit with some more interesting stuff. So, if you happen to have this drawing, to hand, as one does. You'll notice I haven't put any brake gear on. That's because I'm going to print that separately. I'm going to draw that in a bit. That way, I only have to have one model for the side. That means that you can. So, all I'm going to do really is print the brake shoe and the attachment point, and not print the handle or the. Um, Sort of break, what you call it, the sort of rest bit that you put the handle on, where you move the handle up and down. Um, I'm not printing those, so I'm going to make those out of um, plastic strip, because that will give it a much finer appearance. You just can't get with this kind of 3D printing any kind of um, with any decent mechanical strength. So we've saved that side. Let's click the update. This is all my favourite bit. Click the update and then watch every last little detail that you've made appear. There you go. That's always nice. Right. I think it's time to do that brake gear. Save in case everything crashes again. And the heater fires up. Can you actually hear that? Or do I have to sit here in the cold? I don't know. I'm going to leave it on for now, but if anyone complains, I'll turn it off. Actually, I can do an experiment. Yeah, the background noise level drops quite a lot there. But I am cold and ill, so I think I'm going to this week. Right. Uh, I didn't want that menu. I want to move that menu. New design. Save it straight away. Uh, let's break. And again, we start with the sketch. This time, we're not going to start with the proper sketch, we're going to start with the fake sketch. And then we're going to do our own sketches around that. So that sketch is 14mm diameter, which is the wheel we're going to be using. And then we can work our actual sketch around it. So I'm going to allow for 1mm of room either side wheel, which means making a 2mm bigger diameter, so that's 16mm. That top section of the brake shoe I want to make, um, well, it's about 0.5mm in the drawing. I don't really want to go below 0.75 on that, so I'm going to go for 
dimension this one separately because I want to use that dimension plus um, that's in 5 times 2, which is 1.5. Let's see. No, that's not going to get that. Yeah. Let's put a line, a couple of lines. So one, one from there to there, and one from there to there. These are going to form our break sheet. So the other thing you can do with the dimension tool is angles. You don't need to pick any different tool, it will just work it out. So uh, I'm not going to do that actually because I can't. I don't have a protractor with me, so I can't measure that angle. What I'm going to do instead is measure off the top and the bottom there, which I can do with a normal ruler, which is approximately 4 millimeters, And it is, let's call that 1 millimeter above the top. So let's break sure that a slightly awkward angle. Bit one mil there, so it sort of hangs down more than it does on the side. That'll do. Extrude that bit by. Uh, let's keep it one sided for now. Let's give that two mil, just for starters. Keep sketching in that plane there. Just have a sort of box thing coming off the back of it, which I think is just going to be easier to draw with lines. So let's put that sort of there ish. Do. Those lines parallel. Let's give that a relationship. Let's make that point start on that edge and that point start on that edge. Dimension that, not on that angle. So you have to be a little bit wary of. Especially when you're working with angles. That is 1.75 mil. Let's make that 2 for strength. 